concert hall. You're here to have a good time. You're here to order drinks. You're here to relax and have fun and uh, not be too serious about it. Joe Gantz and uh, young Joe Gantz were saying, I heard him a while ago saying, isn't it too bad that now that Ben Conroy is retired from the cable business, he's got to earn his living playing in bars. <laughs> and he's got to get his old friend Marlo Froke to promote him. <laughs> uh, first, <laughs> He's been playing Boogie Woogie Piano a lot longer than he's been playing with uh, cable systems. And, uh, tonight we have a chance to, to uh, welcome to Happy Valley Ben Conroy playing what he calls the bluegrass of the blues. How about it, Ben? Good talking to you. Matches my eyes. Just a bad strap. <laughs> Thank you. I hope most of you could recognize that as, the, as a takeoff on the St. Louis Blues by W.C. Handy. Tonight is going to be a program of, of a form of music which has been around this country since, uh, since the turn of the century. Um, blues, certainly. Boogie Woogie was around then, too. It was called by a different name, but it was played. It came uh, to be quite a great fad in this, in the uh, later on in the late 30s and early 40s, and then sort of dropped from sight. But the roots of it you're hearing today, whether you like it or not, in rock and roll and rhythm and blues, but it all comes from those roots. I'll be talking about some of the people who 
started this and who were best at it and play it. Basically, it is a music of the black people. In fact, I'll only be playing a tune tonight, one tune, uh, by a white person, but it's black music. <laughs> I'm going to start with a number by a man named Mead Lux Lewis who was born and reared in Chicago, played in Chicago for a long time. Uh, a number of his called Yancey Special, and we'll talk about where that name comes from in, a, in due course. Uh, this was, I don't know when he composed it. When I say composed, most of these people couldn't read music. So when they composed, they would just make up something as they go along, and it would get itself established as a set piece. But he recorded this in 1936 or 7, it was recorded and turned by Bob Crosby's band in about 1938. So this is Yancey's special by me, Lux Lewis. Okay, um, I'll be talking about blues and boogie woogie. Boogie woogie is blues. It's just blues played in a in a different form. And I often think of boogie woogie as the bluegrass of, of blues because while blues can be somber and dark, they can also be joyous and a lot of fun. Uh, I like them both, but I like the uh, the bluegrass style best. I mentioned a man named Yancey before. He was one of Mead Lux Lewis's teachers in the south side of Chicago. 
most of these people in those days did not, could not earn a living full-time playing music. I couldn't either, for that matter. <laughs> Meet Lux Lewis started as a, as a as he, he was washing cars or he was driving cabs. Jimmy Yancey was called Papa Yancey by people that he was teaching. His full-time job was a groundskeeper. He used to roll the grounds at Comiskey Park for the White Sox. But he was a very fine, very fine indeed, blues pianist. And he was pretty much strictly blues. He played a little boogie, but he was slow and somber. I'm going to play a number of Jimmy Yancey's called Five O'Clock Blues. And I don't know exactly what it refers to, except that this might be something that would be played in the wee hours of the morning when everybody was getting ready to go home. So this is Five O'Clock Blues. <laughs> It was a characteristic of Jimmy Yancey that no matter what key he played a number in, he always modulated to that little change in E flat. So no matter what key, he always ended in E flat. Uh, also in his music, you'll notice a kind of a tango rhythm. That, that follows a lot in through the blues. The next number I'm going to do is by a white man. And this man is, was, S. Brunson Campbell. He was a white protege of Scott Joplin, uh, therefore right around the turn of the century. He retired from music and became a barber in Venice, California, where he died in around 1952. And this number is called, appropriately enough, Barbershop Rag.
Getting back into the boogie woogie, it, it can be a very percussive music. A lot of it started down in East Texas, among other places, and Louisiana in the lumber and uh, turpentine camps. And this is early in the century, on into the teens. And what the people would just be in the camps there for months at a time, and itinerant piano players would go around, and they had uh, saloons, bar rooms, where the people would relax in. And uh, normally it was just a piano player and a guitar. Well, these weren't quite concert halls either. They, they, they were having a good time. And in order to be heard, a piano player had to lean into that piano and really hit that thing. So it became very, very percussive. He was his own rhythm section. And uh, this number, appropriately enough, is called Texas Stomp. Uh, I learned it from a record which was recorded in 1938 by a couple called Dot Rice and Frankie Black. So, Texas Stomp. <laughs> Well, we'll go back into a little bit slower one now. With this, we leave Chicago and uh, go down the river a bit to New Orleans. One of the major figures in jazz music was a man named Jelly Roll Morton. Uh, one of the characteristics of jazz musicians that they all, many of, many of them, not all, many of them have strange names. Among piano players, you've got Cow Cow Davenport, Cripple Clarence Lofton, Bat the Hummingbird Robinson. Well, this is Ferdinand Lamont Jelly Roll Morton. And he was a superb pianist. I, I can play very few of the things that he does. He did do one, however, called
called Mamie's Blues. And this is a story of a woman of the streets, and she's just trying to make enough money to take care of her man. And uh, there was, I may try to mouth some words to this thing here, Tony. <laughs> and uh, the 219 that's referred to as a train. So in any case, this is Mamie's Blues. Took my baby away 219 Took my baby away 217 Gonna bring her back someday Now she stood on the corner Feet was dripping wet Stood on the corner Feet was dripping wet Begging each and every man That she met Can't give a dollar Give me one lousy dime Give a dollar, give me one lousy dime. I've got to feed that hungry man of mine. The man that gave his name, or the man that named Boogie Woogie, was Clarence Pinetop Smith. There's another one of those names. Now, he lived in the same area, in fact, as the same boarding house as Meadlux Lewis, lived close by Jimmy Yancey, whom we've mentioned before. He also was closely associated, and I think in the same boarding house, with a, another man named Albert Ammons. I was fortunate enough in my younger days to uh, have my father, when I was underage, bring me to a nightclub called Cafe Society in New York City where Albert Ammons and another man named Pete Johnson, about whom we'll hear later, were playing. And uh, they were, I got, this music was under my skin. I must have been 16 or 17. And uh, uh, these uh, piano players were, were, I think, very patient with a with a young white boy that was just interested in what they were trying to do. So in between sets, I'd ask them, beg them to, how'd you do that? What do you do here? So I learned a little bit at their feet. 
The reason I'm mentioning both of these people is that Pine Top Smith in 1928 made a series of four, five, six recordings, among which was Pine Top's Boogie Woogie. Five days later, he was shot. Uh, he, was, he was innocent, but he caught a stray bullet in a, in a dance hall, and that was that. Now, around all of these people there are legends. Uh, the legend is that shortly before he died, he said to Albert Ammons, Albert, I want you to learn my Boogie Woogie. Well, Albert did. And incidentally, on Albert Ammons, uh, just as a side note, he was left-handed, just like Fats Waller, whom Albert greatly admired. And in Albert's case, it was great, because that left hand, when you hear his records, they really do pound out the rhythm. What I'm going to do is play a short version of Pine Top's original Boogie Woogie, end that, and then go into Albert Ammons' version of it, which he calls Boogie Woogie Stomp. So, this is what I would call, particularly in the Ammons version, hardcore boogie woogie. <laughs> Now we do Albert's version, which is Boogie Woogie Stomp.
Thank you. I think we'll take a little break. <laughs> okay. Shame Records, and I kind of like this. <laughs> I love this. It says uh, it's designed to preserve and promote obscure and often abused American music. <laughs> That's what we're listening to tonight. Uh, he also has a new record that uh, has just been cut, uh, hasn't, isn't out yet. It's a solo album. Uh, that you did in what, St. Louis? Yeah. Uh, another one that he did in St. Louis. He has three here, and he said that these go to the three people that speak up first. <laughs> so uh, the rest of you will have to write, and uh, we have the address here if you're interested. Max already has his is, finger is in the that, air. Is that one of Ben's? Yes. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Max. Got it. Now again, Ben Conroy. Yeah. And all kinds of American popular music, jazz, country music, trains and railroads have played a part, big part. Just think of some country music, Wabash Cannonball, uh, the, uh, uh, the City of New Orleans, uh, and, and folk music, Casey Jones, and Wreck of the 97. Trains, it's captured the people's imagination in the early part of the century. Captured mine, too, because uh, my grandfather was a locomotive engineer, and I used to be lucky enough to be able to ride in the cab around the yard back to the shops with him. But it's a funny thing, a lot of piano players that I know, uh, Charlie Booty was just mentioned, I've got another friend in Louisville, uh, all of us somehow or other have this thing for steam locomotives and trains. So I'm going to play a train piece now, and this is again by our friend Mead Lux Lewis of Chicago. And this is called the Honky Tonk Train Blues, and it, 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 I think it depicts what Mead Lux used to hear. His family used to live alongside the, the IC tracks, the Illinois Central tracks, and after a while, I guess, this constant thrumming of the wheels worked its way into his consciousness and out his fingers into the music. Uh, the left hand is pretty repetitive, and as you may see it with the right, the wheels going around, or maybe you won't. Now, Max, if you want, you can dance to this over here. <laughs> so I'm going to put my railroad cap on, and we're going to play the Honky Tonk Train Blues.
Back in about 19... But that's Mead Lux Lewis. I've got uh, a couple. No, I don't. Cass. I could write one about Cass in West Virginia. <laughs> I'll be thinking about it. <laughs> Back in 1928, a man named Leroy Carr uh, made a lot of records. And one of the first ones he did was a blues called How Long, How Long Blues. Many people have played that. Many have recorded it. I want to play two versions tonight. One will be the, a slower version by Jimmy Yancey, and another one will be a more upbeat version by, I'm not sure by whom, I guess there's some of me in there and some of other people. But in any case, how long, how long, blues. There are words to this, but I'm not going to attempt them. You'll remember that Jimmy Ancy always modulates to E flat to N, so so here's another version, a little bit different style.
There's another man named Pete Johnson in this group I've been talking about, Albert Ammons, Meadlocks Lewis. Together they formed a, a trio, and they played at this Cafe Society Club I'd mentioned before. Pete was originally from Kansas City, and uh, he started off by playing drums, but ended up being one of the fine blues and jazz piano players, as well as a boogie-woogie piano player. I'm going to play a number of his called Casey on My Mind. Back to my friend Jimmy Yancey with one of his numbers, which he called State Street Special. State Street, of course, is a street in Chicago, so State Street.
I'm not going to give you a name for this next one because after I'm finished, and it's not a long one, I'd like you to tell me what you think the name is. <laughs> if any of you listen to National Public Radio, I'll give you a hint. things considered. All things considered, this is a fun night. <laughs> With apologies to Susan Stanberg and her crew. Back to Chicago again. Uh, blues are written by anything at all. Songs are written by anything at all. There was a group of apartment houses called the Mecca Flats out there, and a, a piano player named Jimmy Blythe composed a song called the Mecca Flat Blues. When I say composed and it's a blues, you usually play the first chorus or two where the theme is recognizable, and then most piano players just wander off in some direction and end up with the theme. So following that routine, I'll, I'll uh, do Mecca Flat Blues.
I'm going to play a tune which isn't attributable to anybody. Uh, I call it Whips and Midgets, and I'm not going to tell you why I call it that either. <laughs> there is a story behind it, but uh, I think not for here. <laughs> Next is <clears throat> another of what have I called the hardcore boogie-woogie. And it's by our friend Albert Ammons of the left hand. And uh, this has a biblical connotation in its title. If you recall certain Old Testament verses that say, Sound ye trumpets, shout for joy. Well, this is shout for joy.
Thank you.